Ashan Dhabak to chair the session. Ashan Bhai, now over to you. Uh, thank you, Professor Sainsek. Uh, it's my privilege uh, to get this opportunity to chair this session. Uh, th this is our uh, base lecture series, online lecture number 18, and uh, base English net set preparation, lecture number 3. So uh, you look uh, to qualify net set exam is not an easy task. It need uh, huge labor. It needs smart work. Uh, I will not take much uh, more time. So, so today's speaker is uh, Muhammad Tarikul Islam. Uh, he is a gold medalist. I think we have lost contact with our speaker. So, I would like to say some uh, few words. Actually, this video. Uh, we upload this recording to our YouTube channel. So I would like to request all the participants kindly uh, mute your microphone and switch off your camera. So, you know, it looks odd, uh, awkward when we see that the speaker is speaking in someone in uh, San Lugenji or uh, in some video we see generally a fan or something else. So it is very disturbing. So I'd like to request all the participants, please, please switch off your camera and mute yourself. Hassan Bhai, can we start? Hassan Bhai, am I audible? So I would request uh, to uh, Mahmoud, Professor Mahmoud Tarikul Islam uh, to start this lecture. Okay, good evening everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Good, good evening, sir. Uh, already introduction. Good evening, good evening, good evening. So already introduction part is over. Okay, am I audible? My voice is audible. Yes, yes. Please response. Yes, Anybody? sir, audible. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, sir. So good evening. Good evening, good evening. Okay. So the introduction part is over. Now I would like, without wasting time, I would like to jump to the topic. Yes. So first of all, I would like to extend my heart full of thanks to base. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So heart full of thanks to base, especially for giving me such kind of opportunity to, you know, such a platform for making me able to speak in such a platform. This platform is uh, not an ordinary one. Rather, here we have seen that a galaxy of intellectuals of like-minded people. Because I have spoken in so many gatherings, but there was a kind of promiscuous audience was there. But here is a like-minded, most of all, 90% of the audience, I can guess, or 95%, they are from the same background, they are from English literature. And all of them are aspiring to be, you know, uh, prospective professors or lecturers, either in college or universities. So... So why net? So this lecture is basically, you know, so I, I, I would like to again thank BASE you know, for uh, arranging such kind of lecture so that the people get opportunity you know, to know what are the pros and cons of preparing for net and set. Okay. So these kind of discussions are very much necessary in the sense because in discussion we have exchange of ideas. Because if you are preparing or you are, you are having self-study, so in that self-study, you will not get, you know, you are very much likely to go astray because you don't have the guidance. So to create such kind of platform in which the, uh, the so many uh, intellectuals will you know, exchange their views and ideas, it's a really a good idea. That's why I will always be thankful to you know, such kind of organization called BASE. Okay. So I would pray to the Almighty so the base should be successful in its, you know, whatever its aims and objectives are there. Okay, so now there are so many exams are there 
in this world or in India, there are so many competitive exams and so many platforms are there where we can go, so many you know, careers we can choose, but why NET and SET? I'm telling you one thing, the NET and SET is very advantageous in the sense because in other preparation, in other uh, exams, for other exams, if you are preparing, you will get only once in a year, perhaps, maximum once in a year opportunity. Or in some other exams, especially and since we are most of the background from Bengal, we are from Bengal especially, because the organization is also called the Bengali Academia and for social empowerment. So we see that most of the students either and you know, either go those who want to go for teaching, they prepare for uh, SSC. But you see that the condition of uh, the job in SSC and school teachers or other also in WBCS or other exams are very rare. Okay. Because they don't give the, what is that called, the platform, the opportunity to appear in the exam. The exams are not held. In two or three years, the exams are held. But NET is such kind of exam. If you are preparing for NET, and especially if you are from Bengal, then you had another opportunity. You will get the set. Okay. So NET, so you will, if you are preparing for NET, then you will be getting the opportunity thrice in a year. Such a huge opportunity. In other exams, you don't get the opportunity to sit for the exam, but here you will get the opportunity at least thrice to give the exam. So it's met, you know, either in December and June as the uh, as per the norms of NTA, and once at least once a year in set. Okay, so that means in one preparation you can give you know thrice in a year exam. So if you are preparing for this exam, it is very easy. In that sense that you are getting the opportunity, the number of attempts you are getting more than the, than that of the other exams. So if you are preparing the same syllabus you are preparing, it's not like that WB set syllabus is different from that of NET. So that with the same syllabus, you can you know, give you know, thighs in a year. That's why the opportunities become high, the more, or opportunities get higher than, than that of the other exams. That's why I, I especially encourage my own students to give to those who have already qualified NET, who have already you know, passed the master degree. Sorry. So they, you know, I, I want them to prepare for NET and say, because the opportunities are more in this. And also, NET and SET, I prefer NET and SET than other exams. If this is the such kind of exam that you have to qualify only once. You have to qualify just only once. The certificate will be given. And it is written in the certificate. The validity of the certificate is forever or permanent. You can, you can see the NET certificate. Those who don't have, those who have, you can ask them you know, to show it to you. And you will be very much delighted to see that it's written. The validity of the certificate is forever. It's not like that, that you have qualified, then again, and since you don't get the job in two or three years, then again you have to appear. It's not like that. Once you appear, your job is over. So this is very important. That's why I prefer NET and SET especially. And, but there are so many, you know, uh, there are a, a kind of, you know, a wrong misconceptions about NET and SET because I have asked so many students, you know, people, why, why are you, you know, going for SSC only and why not NET and SET because you have the qualification, you know, you have the 55% or 50% in if you are in category or in general 55%. And they say, sir, NET is very tough, this or that. It's not tough. Our mindset is, okay. Our mindset is different. We have to change our mindset because there is there is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. As Shakespeare is of the view, you know, in Hamlet, there is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Your thinking is the main thing. If you think that you can qualify, then you can qualify. Okay, that is the main criteria. That that is the main mindset you have to make. That you will. You must. You know, you are preparing. You are you are, you are putting hard work, so you must qualify. And you can see that I have seen because I have so many friends and my brothers also they are studying and I have seen so many guys are there especially from Aligarh Muslim University. I can tell you, you know, they keep on appearing from graduation in order to test their knowledge in NET. Because in NET it's not like that that after you qualifying MA that you can sit that you can sit. Because in certificate it is, it is also written the certificate has been issued on the basis of the performance of the students of the candidates in the NET exam. So it is duty of the appointing authority to check the eligibility criteria. So if you are 
filling up the form you, you can you can you can sit so if you are in graduation it's not like the graduating students can't sit they also can sit to test their knowledge so if you are if you are really having this mindset that no you will go for this late and say and you are aspiring to be a uh, either professor in either college or university then from the very beginning i will say that you should start for that you should start preparing for that and so far as the preparation is concerned okay the uh, there in lies the importance of net and set you are getting thrice opportunity three times opportunity in a year to you know with the preparation of the same syllabus to sit for the exam and another thing the next when you have uh, prepared for yourself when you have uh, already had this mindset that you will go for net and set you know you aspire to be a teacher you know either in college or university then the next question how to prepare okay the syllabus is really is a vast it's really very vast okay it's not a kind of coca cake work okay but a kind of you know the rose is dream that you can have it easily it's not like that you can't have it hands down you have to work hard and there is no shortcut to this and therein lies the problem so today we'll be discussing my topic is also there the british literature why british literature so syllabus of the net is very vast it is divided into 10 units okay from the last year 8 2018 it has been changed when the entire took over from ugc for conducting this net so so many students came to me they said uh, the net syllabus has been changed i had a look at the net which nothing has been changed only the wording has been changed the phraseology has been changed the syllabus is the same earlier you know from chaucer to the present age but now what they did that they just you know the same literature they have divided into drama into fiction into non fictional prose and poetry so the same things you have to it's not like that that you are preparing for drama in a separate way you have to read that english literature or british literature and then the language pedagogy their literary theory and criticism is there only two units that had been introduced new earlier were there but it was not demarcated or separate like that but two units that had been okay uh, introduced that is cultural studies and uh research methodology and materials so cultural studies come also under literary theory and criticism it's nothing different and so far as you know literature students concerned who should you know somewhat know the about the literary materials or literary methods you know their research methods and materials in english but there is nothing is clear about this because if you go through the questions okay of last 10 years of net as well as wb set because since we are from bengal that's why i'm talking of wb set so you will see that 70 to 80% of the questions have been set from you know british literature 70 to 80% yes 70 to 80 if you go through the last 10 year question you see that most of the questions are 70 to 80% questions are set from you know british literature that there lies the importance of british literature you know? it's easy as well and and the students of bengal are very in advantageous position why because in bengal syllabus i have seen of uh, uh, more or less 20 universities are there in bengal so in the, if you see the syllabus of these 20 universities the things that are taught that bengal uh, so far as the net syllabus is concerned the bengal students are in advantageous position than their counterparts in other parts of india because i also you know did my graduation from outside bengal so i know the difference between the syllabus especially while going for the net preparation because being in bengal the history of english literature is taught from the graduation level but in amu where i read that so uh, the, the other syllabus is uh, okay okay master degree syllabus is good but in graduation we did not get so much opportunity to read the history of english literature that's why i had to do the extra uh, extra work, hard work okay to devote my time extra apart from the preparing for from the syllabus of the exam i had to devote myself to the study of english literature okay especially history of english literature so bengali bengali student those who have graduated and and have did their masters from bengal they are in advantageous position in that sense now so what are the challenges so this british literature so since 70 to 80 percent a questions are set from british literature especially in net i am talking of net but for the last 10 years where the set is concerned wb set is concerned wb set is concerned where the questions are set outside that other than british if you go through the question paper of set of last 3 to 4 years you have seen this you will see this trend 
that questions are set you know, from other than British literature. It's not very few questions are from British literature. So far as set is concerned, I will come to the latter one. So, so far as net is concerned, the 70 to 80 percent questions are from British literature, and then the more important that's why the importance of British literature is so much. So far as you know, preparation for net and set net and net is concerned, UGC net or NTN net is concerned. So, how to prepare for British literature? Now, the next question, you know, since the British literature is so much important, so how to prepare? So, preparing for British literature is really challenging because in British literature from, you know, Anglo-Saxon period, right from the beginning to the, up to the present age, you know, I have seen more or less, you know, 500 writers, more than 500 writers and more than three to 4,000 works are there. So it's really difficult to you know, know all about all of them, all of the writers as well as all of their works. It becomes very difficult. But there is a strategy. That there is the, 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 that is the challenge regarding British literature. It's easy as well. To most of the most of the students are very much aware of this. Okay, because since the graduation, they are they are, they are reading about they are hearing about Chaucer, Shakespeare, Spencer. No, what's what called is Byron like that? Okay, T. S. Eliot, Bernard Shaw. No, we are we are we are listening and we are reading about them from since our you know, uh, graduation liter graduation syllabus. But it's challenging because there are so many authors are there. Okay, so what we have to do first, I suggest to overcome these challenges. So my experience is concerned because I gave also uh, because I teach the net city students as well. But so far, my experience is concerned is that first of all before we are going into the details of british literature you have to just go through the question papers last 10 years question papers you just go through the questions as well as the answers the options are very very important as well you have to go through all the options okay then you can have idea what kind of questions they ask what kind of questions are asked what kind of questions are said what is the standard of the question so you can have that idea. So first go through the 10 years question papers. Okay. It is available on the all NKS syllabus. It's available. Okay. So you, you can go through the questions and their answers. 10 years question. And also set questions. Especially since when the intro the, they introduced, especially UGC introduced the multiple choice question. From 2012, it had been introduced. From at least 2012 onwards, you can uh, you can but uh, take the question papers and you can go through the question papers Push and their answers all the options you should go through and question papers as well okay then you will have the idea what kind of questions are set there then what you have to do then you go through the then you start the preparation so far myself is concerned because when i was doing MA. You know, and I started my preparation, as I told you, my, my preparation started since graduation. I was very much fond of reading history of English literature. History of English literature was a kind of a hobby. So by the time I was in MA final year, I qualified net. When I was in MA final year, okay, previous, okay, in December, I just sat for the exam just to know the questions. And then by the time I was, you know, in MA, Final year, I qualified net because of that because I devoted my time since graduation. Okay? Since graduation, I because I, I never appeared in any other exam, no other competitive exam I sat because my goal was there just to qualify net. I, at that time, very net was very much easier, but this time, of so many, so many candidates are there and so many net qualified candidates. But I am telling you one thing: you will be very much delighted. Because you know, there is nothing to be disappointed about that, especially if you are from English literature, you are very much lucky. And those you know, who are now preparing, especially you know, uh, you just you know, try your little best to qualify in you know, in this net or the, or the next year net. Because I had uh, last time I was in with university teachers who has that kind of information, who just go to with CSC College Service Commission that in 2021 and 2022. In these two years, maximum number of English teachers of Bengal are going to be retired. Okay? Maximum number of teachers. So the posts will be huge. 
in English, post will be huge. The opportunities are limitless. So you should not be disheartened that there are so many candidates. Uh, earlier it was very rare, but that in now so many candidates are there, posts are less. No, there are so many posts. And new, new universities and colleges are coming up, and the new posts are being created. So there is nothing to be decided about. No? There is nothing to be frightened about. You should not be no, more hopeless. Rather, you should be cheerful. No? So you should devote you know, yourself. What we have to do, just you know, put your, channelize your work in the right track and just devote your time to the study of literature so that you can qualify me. Okay? So how to prepare British literature now? So when you have already seen the questions and the pattern, you know, after that, you should, what you have to do, I suggest that you just from the Anglo-Saxon period up to the present age, you should you know, go through the periods. You learn the periods. To know the periods is very much important. History, especially. You know? History is especially very much important. To know the periods. And for the convenience of discussion, the historians have already divided the continuity of literature into segments of time that are called periods or ages. So you should go through those ages right from the Anglo Saxon period up to the present age. Anglo Saxon period like 440 to 1066, then Anglo, then Middle English period 1066 to 1500, then comes the Renaissance, then the 1500 to 1660, then again Renaissance is divided into different categories, okay, like Elizabethan age, Jacobian age, and the Caroline age, the date I am giving, and that's why. The problem is there are so many students concerned, you are, you are telling one date of Jacobian age, 1603 to 1625, but in another book it's written. So, so far as these dates are concerned, I would like to suggest one book that is Glossary of Literary Terms, M.H. Abrams, because this is a prize winning, winning book and a universally accepted book. The periods here given are, you know, it's confirmed to widespread practice and it is, and it is the universally accepted. That's why I would like all of you to suggest to go through the, the this glossary of literary terms. Those who are not yet bought, you should buy these today, you know, by tomorrow, and then go through the periods of English literature. Okay, here the periods and mug up those. Memorize those. It's very, very necessary. Because when when you are reading Wordsworth, you know Wordsworth, but in where, to which wage he belongs, you don't know, then you are just beating about the bush and telling you. Okay? You are just reading in the dark. So you should know that which age that did Wordsworth belong, which age T.S. Eliot belong, which age John Clare belong. Okay, you should know this. And for that, the first of all, I suggest my students that go through these periods and memorize these periods, right from the anglo saxon up to the present age, contemporary. And in that book, you will find these periods are also followed by a critical commentary, short commentary on these periods. You should also read those because they are the important writers and the works are already more or less are given. So, so that you should know something about the, who are the main writers of that period and what are the main works, the most phenomenal work of that period. And that's why I'm telling. So first, first thing you have to do while preparing British literature, just go through the periods from M.H. Abrams, the periods of English literature, right from Anglo-Saxon period to the present age, memorize those and also go through the commentary. Then, then what you have to do that from the anglo saxon period up to the present, age by age, you have to take the writers, the different writers. Who are the main writers of the anglo saxon period? Who are the main writers of the Elizabethan period? Who are the main writers of the Jacobian age? So make a list of those writers. And then when you have made a list of those writers, okay, and one thing I'm, I will suggest while making a list of those writers, you should also make a list chronologically. That's very important. Nowadays, you have seen the questions are asked. The questions, the questions are asked nowadays not of a single writer. Rather, you have to arrange chronologically. So, therein lies the, that uh, you have to know the date of birth and date of date of all the writers. And how can you more than five hundred writers is there? Okay, it's really very difficult. It's neither desirable nor possible to know for a student each and every writer's date of birth and date of death. So what you have to do, you just arrange chronologically while making list from different books or internet. Okay, so where where you are from, the, the date of, you you should make a list of chronologically and memorize them chronologically. So in that case, when you, if you are reading chronologically, the chronological thing will be in mind. For, for example, suppose if you are reading, if you are making a list of romantic writers, 
okay so first you should you you should you, you should do like this first what's what then Coleridge, then saude then byron then shelley then kids so they're chronologically that's they're coming chronologically okay so you you don't have to remember the dates i know the date because at that time i was i was memorizing i was i was very very much you know fond of memorizing the date of birth and date of death what's what 1772 1850 coldage 1772 to 1834 and then what's how the 1774 1834 okay and then byron 1798 1824 and then shelley 1792 1822 and kids 1795 1821 so at that time when i was preparing i remember i memorized the dates of most of the writers phenomenal writers from the days of chaucer up to the present age and still i remember mashallah so this is not to say that so now it's very difficult because at that time when i gave net i am 2007 and when you were giving net in 2002 that is different because at that time the writers were also less but in these 13 years, so many writers have been added, and especially in, from the contemporary period, and the questions are asked from them. It's really very difficult. So what you have to do, the one strategy is that you, you don't have to mug up the date of birth and date of death. Rather, you have to, what is that called? You have to, this, and chronologically, read the writers chronologically. What's what, you know, Coleridge, Saude, Byron, Shelley, Kids. Okay? I think Coley's date was, uh, I, I, the made a mistake, Coley's date will be uh, 1772 to 1834. No, 1772 to 1834. Okay, and uh, 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 Saudi's date will be 1774 1846. Okay, so these are the strategy. So what you have to do, you, you, uh, you are not uh, required to remember the date of birth and date of death, just make a list chronologically. In the same way, when you are preparing for, uh, no, that is, uh, Elizabeth and Edge will go through the university weights. So make a list chronologically, read chronologically, okay? Without, you know, without remembering their date of birth and date of birth. And why are they called universities? You should also go that, uh, they, you should also remember, apart from that, that and uh, either since they are called university weights, because they, university weights, because they are the university scholars. Either they were the product of Oxford University or Cambridge University. So among who, who, who are the product of Oxford University and who are the product of Cambridge University, we have to know this. Lily Pilly Lodge, they were the Oxfordian school and Green and Marlowe and Nash, they were from you know, Cambridge school. These things you have to know. Okay. So while, so make a list from Anglo-Saxon period up to the present age chronologically and read those chronological writers. Chronologically read the writers. Automatically, you know, you are, uh, you are not then, you are not then required to remember the date of birth date of birth. So read them chronologically. In the same way, the same process can be applied when you, if you are reading, you know, suppose T.S. Eliot and then make a list of his phenomenal works. Okay. So nowadays you will never find. Yeah, nowadays we will never find that uh, uh, the when was murdered in the cathedral of T.S. Eliot was published. Such, queen, such kind of questions you will not find. Rather you will find, arrange the works of T.S. Eliot in a chronological order. In last 2019, maybe in June or December, there was a question. Okay, his poetic dramas were given and then you were asked to, you know, uh, chronologically. You were asked to arrange them chronologically, or which is the correct, which is in the correct chronological sequence. So that question was there. So when you are reading, the poetic dramas of T.S. Eliot, what you have to do that arrange them chronologically and make a list of them chronologically and read them, memorize them chronologically. Okay, like Murder in the Cathedral, the Family Reunion, Cocktail Party, Confidential Clerk and the Abler Statesman. Okay, so these, the, the, you are not required to remember the dates of their publication, rather you are chronological reading, so your mind is there. So mindset will be there, it will be set in your mind. When you are reading chronologically, if you are making a list, chronological list, then you don't have to mm, search for date of publication like that. Chronological publication. And you are all not also supposed or required to, you know, remember the dates of publication. So make chronologically. Writers also read chronologically and their works also read chronologically. Nowadays this is also up. And also, Third thing is that, so make a chronological list of the writers, make a chronological list of their important works. But while reading their important works, you should not also at all ignore, especially the, you know, the lesser writings of that. Sometimes these questions are also asked. Some you know, unknown work or lesser or minor work is given by great writer. 
that the students don't know while you know while reading words what you know and uh, we we know the main poems okay and that so, uh, but uh, but the lesson known work uh, lesson known work is given you know, then the students that fail because they had not the learn those lesson on work so what you have to do so while preparing these writers you should remember you know carefully the important works the characters okay you go through that and also while preparing that you should not also at all ignore their lesson on work you should at least know that this work was written by this suppose you know for example i am giving a uh, one questions and, uh, and uh, you can personally watch me up who is the writer without you know without taking the help of book or internet the immaturity the immaturity is the name of a novel and you know, who is the writer and i think this writer you know every student of english literature knows this writer it is a novel by writer a great writer one of the greatest writers of the age okay of i am not giving the age okay one of the greatest write writers of english literature and he wrote this novel who is the writer so I, I know everybody knows the writer, but very when you will learn that this novel was written by this writer, you will be very much surprised. You know, this this writer also can write such kind of novel. Okay, so these are the lesser known works of that writers. Okay, so you should also take care of that. So while so the, what we have to do, let's prepare prepare make a list of the writers chronologically, make a list of their important works chronologically, and uh, and also the lesson on works you should know. And so far as so far as the works are concerned, because sometimes characters are also asked, so it's neither desirable nor feasible that you have to buy two thousand books or more than three thousand works. You have to buy. It's neither desirable nor possible. what we have to do the import important works we go through the summary from books as well as your internet is there or wikipedia is there you can go there and you can and you can read those you no know, you can read the summary as well as you know the characters especially you should know the characters the phenomenal work the most important works okay? of the writers you should know this it's not that every you know all the 3000 works we have to know that may the phenomenal work the most important works okay while you are preparing you can understand that the questions are asked from this work suppose if you are you know if you are preparing for dickens okay or if you are preparing for shakespeare especially he has written you know 30 around more or less 37 plays but it's not like that the 37 plays of all of their characters we have to know what we have to know you have to know the main characters especially his great tragedies hamlet othello king lear and macbeth is great romances especially that the tempest the symbol iron and the winter tale so these main main works you no know, you have to and who are the characters there you have to know this so in this way if you are prepare things suppose you know suppose in 10 days there are around 300 or 400 writers suppose in take if you are preparing 10 writers in a day so i think in one month you will be complete in british literature but it's still another one month giving if you are preparing properly if you are getting high writers a day so at least in two months you can prepare for british literature british literature is a very much important because the that if you go through the syllabus so you will find that literary theory and criticism also there that come under british literature because most of the writers these writers are also critics think of ben johnson think of dryden think of sydney he was a poet as well as critic ben johnson poet as a critic dr johnson and uh, he was also a you know essay writer he was a poet he was a also novelist rasselas that he wrote and also he was a critic ts eliot he was a poet he was a dramatist he was a critic he was a journalist so these things you know so the literary theory and criticism in another unit they have for a given but it also come under british literature everything british literature covers everything we can't ask it british so if you are preparing british literature properly then i think the 80% syllabus of the net are covered and very few questions are asked from other units so far as language is concerned there very few questions are there especially three topics if you um, if you are uh, uh, if you are uh, uh, properly study for net i uh, i can guarantee inshallah you can qualify in net research british literature from anglo saxon up to the present age okay? and literary theory and literary critics these three things if you are preparing properly then i think 80% of the net questions or you know, preparations will be open and for the 
rest of that topic you just go through you don't have to devote so much time you just go through what kind of questions have been asked last 10 years questions you just you have to know one day only the surface knowledge will do but deeply you have to study these three topics british literature and literary theory and criticism also come under british literature so these three topic, topics if you are reading that i think the 80% preparation will be over and so far it's safe is concerned since you are from bengal and wb set i have uh, seen that train so far it's safe is concerned the wb set especially the questions if you go through the last 10 years from 2012 onwards when the uh, when the, uh, the new pattern has been introduced of multiple choice questions you will find that very few questions are from british literature when wb set uh, if you are preparing for wb set then you, you, your strategy of preparation has to be changed somehow so your preparation will be your focus will be not on british literature rather on other than british especially american australian indian writing in english african so these questions are asked if you the 19th december 2000 and uh, 20 the set was held and if you go through the, that question paper you will see very few questions one or two questions from british literature and rest of the questions rest of the 95 to 98 questions were from other than british from indian from australian no? from african from american okay? from canadian literature so while preparing for set just keep in mind that you should go through those you know, the other literatures okay? and so far as the so many students ask me that which books to study especially so far the history is concerned because while preparing for literature you should you know know the history especially if you are preparing for you know the, when you are if you are reading david david Hanage, marlowe shakespeare spencer so you should know also the history until and unless you know the reformation what is reformation you know, what is catholicism what is protestantism you will not be able or fully able to grasp you just mark them up but you will not be able to understand you know the issues and the challenges that were facing that were faced by those writers this was the Milton way of preparing the reformation so that just uh, yet spencer is called a child of renaissance and reformation so many times it has this question is asked also and especially in from his fairy queen it is prescribed in the syllabus of graduation as well as master degree so this question asked okay and the students mark up the notes why he is called the child of renaissance and reformation without knowing what is actually renaissance and what is reformation okay so you have to know these things you have while preparing you go for the you know while preparing the writers and their work before you prepare the writers and their work you should know the age as well as the you know, historical background the social background because literature is nothing literature is nothing but the product of society okay? it's a product of society a, a writer is a product of his own time of society and what he is writing he is reflecting his own time like Tennyson is regarded as the, you know, the as a representative poet of Victorian age because he's fine. Why he's called representative? Because he represents Victorian age. In his in his uh, in his uh, writings, we can find that he represents the all the you know before the doubts and the conflicts, you know, conflict between faith and reason, conflict between idealism and and uh, realism, the conflict between science and religion. These things have been fully and also he also represents the Victorian compromise. So he is the product of his age. He is the product of his age. So every writer, each and every writer, is the product of his age of the society. And that's why before you know, going through his, the air, any writer or any work, you have to know the age and the society of which he is the product. Okay? So these things, if you are keeping in mind, then I think that will you know, suffice for English, the British preparation of British literature. Now, <laughs> I think I had been given 40 minutes time and I, I, I'll be doing justice according to the time as well. That the, I should also respect the command that has been given by the organizers because they, since they are organizing, they know the pitfalls, merits and demerits. Now, if you have any questions, then you can ask me you know, regarding my lecture. If you are not able to understand anything or if you, are, if you have any questions, any type of questions regarding net set preparation, then you can ask me. Okay. Hello? Am I audible to everybody? Hello? Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, any yes, questions yes. from the uh, audience? Uh, Please ask. You can ask me. 
Suppose I know nothing about English literature, but I am a student of English literature. I want to prepare for NEET exam or state exam. What can I do? What should be the beginning? Yeah, the beginning, as I told you, the beginning, as I told you, there should be from the periods. We start from the periods of English literature from M H A Abrams. Just memorize those periods, and then you take up one by one writers and their works. This is the you know ideal for me especially. This is the ideal you know or method of beginning. A preparation of English literature, especially British literature. You should go through the periods first. Sir, uh, 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 yes. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, actually, uh, I uh, completed my masters from the university where uh, I hardly uh, joined any class. Okay, and I uh, hardly go through uh, any books. Uh, that most of the students who are regular basis uh, do their class. Okay, they they go through so many books and novels and drama, etc., etc. Mostly we do. the same thing but the summary in a summary manner so whether we should read the text or the uh, background or the no. detail uh, particularly if you, uh, you perhaps you have not listened to my lecture properly as i told you you should go through the writers and their important works and the, so far the important works are concerned you should go through the summary you should know the important works as well as the characters okay and at the same time you are not supposed to neglect the lesser known works of that writer okay Yes, only, only, only the, only the. Okay, I, 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 I'm yes. Uh, before uh, I am coming to you, Murshid. Okay, um, I told you, I asked you one question. The Nobel in Maturity is written by anybody from the audience. I think seventy-five participants are there. Okay, anybody from the audience can who can give the right answer. Who is the writer of this Nobel the in Maturity? Anybody? I forgot. I can't answer. Anybody? Yes, George Bernard Shaw. Very good. Who? What is your name? Uh, Pranita. Huh? Hello. Pranita. Who? 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 Who gave this answer? Hello. Yes. Yes, George Bernard Shaw. So we know that George Bernard Shaw is one of the greatest dramatists, and he is the single writer, for your kind information, that who won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1925, as well as Oscar. He is the single. english writer he is the single literary writer who got both the prize the highest prize highest prize in cinema as well as highest prize in literature okay the most prestigious prize of the world that he was the first recipient and the la- perhaps first you no know, i i can't say last because any other uh, writers also may get but he is till date he is the first writer you know he is the only writer to get nobel prize as well as oscar okay thank you yes any other question any other question ha uh, murshid unmute yourself unmute unmute It's mute sir there, there are a lot of students who are the who are the beginners most probably uh. who are the beginners i know personally some of them uh-huh. okay i i don't want to mention them but i know personally some of them the who are the beginners okay mm. Uh, so, if you kindly, sir, uh, provide a book list. Uh, someone asked me uh, our day before, uh, some some day before that, uh, what book should I read as a beginner? Uh, so yes, if you yes. Provide a book. As a as a beginner, I can I can uh, yeah, give you the list of David Deches. David Deches, a critical history of English literature, and Rutledge history of English literature, and William J. Long. William J. Long. And J. Long, history of English literature. William J. Long, and sir, other books for uh, the glossary of English literature, uh, literary terms that is written by Abrams. Glossary of literary terms, M. H. Abrams, and also J. Cadden is there. There are so many books. The problem is that that the number of books are more. I can suggest hundreds and hundreds of books. Problem is that how much you can take that matters. Okay, you have to read, and I think for glossary terms is very much important. We you should not go to J. Cadden's the dictionary of literary terms that is very huge. The glossary of literary terms M. H. Abrams is the best, I think, and that is what I personally prefer and that I personally prescribe. 
sir as you mentioned at the beginning of the lecture of your lecture that uh, the, the two two things added newly that by mpa uh, that uh, that uh, those are the uh, cultural studies and the issues methodology uh, methodology but particularly the, which is very common to both paper first paper and the uh, subject paper uh, would you please suggest two books for that cultural studies and uh, issues methodology in particular the no, cultural studies you know uh, i i uh, i i don't suggest any books rather because cultural studies for for this you need you should not read a whole book rather you should take any kind of you know, uh, uh, what is that called literary or a criticism book and uh, now the cultural studies is included recently the uh, in uh, mh abrams the recent edition and i have gone through that and the glossary of literary terms the cultural studies has been added Okay, what we have to know in cultural studies, the main writers, the main writers we have to know, and especially main theorists, and what is their theory? Just you have to be specific. You are not one thing while preparing for liter, especially net. One thing you should remember: you are not supposed to be the master of those writers. You have to have just information, yes. specific information. Later on, the knowledge can be gained. You know, I don't suggest that uh, uh, that are uh, very American writers' books, and it's not like that because we are preparing for you know competitive exams. What you have to do just like your exam is the most important. Knowledge does not more be important. Okay, end justifies the means. You have just make a very okay. If you have the knowledge, but you are not able to crack the net, that nobody will you know ask for you. You whether you have the knowledge or not, that does not matter first. What you, whether you have reached the goal, whether you are able and to qualify net or say that matters first. So just be specific, okay? You have to prepare only those and you know, look for those informations which are very very helpful for preparation. Yes, Shri Manti Ghosh, and you you are asking something. Uh, yes. yes, sir. So while uh, preparing romantic period, what are the specific areas we should focus on, or the specific writers? Specific writers in in romantic period there are so many writers, especially the the older generation of romantics. First, you have to study, okay? The uh, words were um, Coleridge and Southey. Then younger generation of romantics, Byron, Shelley, Keats. Okay, these are poets. You know, apart from that, you have to go through uh, the Nobel because romantic period is such period where there was the least production of. I know the Nobel as well as drama, but the Nobelists were there like Walter Scott, Jane Austen, and also lesser known women writers are there that you have to read. But first of all, you have to read those, and especially Gothic novel. You know, this this is that so many times are questions, and so many questions have been asked from this Gothic novel because Gothic novel was also written in this period. Okay, that William Bab okay. uh, William Beckford. And uh, 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 and Redcliffe, the mysteries of Udolpho. Okay, the Horace Walpole, the Castle of Otranto. You know, William Beckford's Bathek and Mary Shelley, the Frankenstein. These works we have to study. Okay, and also the lesser known women novelists, okay. some of the women novelists. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, thank you. Okay, most welcome. Okay. Any other question? Hello, sir. Mm hmm. Sir. In modern literature, what's your name? What's, what's your name? My name is Anup Mato. Acha, okay. Hmm. Sir, uh, in modern literature, ha. Can you suggest some uh, literate? Uh, those are important. What? I I'm not getting you. The you are not so much. Yeah. I can I suggest what writers. Writer, yes. Yeah, so modern, modern writer. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. modern literature. Who who are the famous writers? Ah, yes. Ah, huh? yeah. So in modern yes. literature, was ah uh, so far as the modern literature is concerned, that that the name, the simple mention of the name, which that strikes the writers like T. S. Eliot, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf. There are so many writers are there. Okay. the uh, banner show also comes under this okay so these there are so many writers in modern period like uh, james joyce uh, virginia wolf t s eliot okay and then uh, uh, yeah and uh, george meredith antony trollope you know uh, it's a huge you got uh, you can go through that okay like uh, e m foster d h lawrence so many writers are there 
So all these writers you have to. So and uh, and one thing I am telling you, yes, uh, very uh, one thing just now I remember. Up to the Victorian period, the preparation becomes you know, so much somewhat easy. But the moment you enter a modern period and especially postmodern, you know, postmodern period like literature after 1950, it becomes very difficult because there are so many writers. You know, in these hundred years, nineteen to two thousand, nineteen hundred one to two thousand, there are more than two hundred writers, and therein lies the challenge. So what we have to do, we have to do, uh, we have to read the phenomenal writers and their works like T. S. Eliot, James Joyce, Virginia Woolf, D. H. Lawrence, okay? George Meredith, Anthony Trollope. So these writers we have to study. Competition. Any other question? So I have one Another more question. question. Huh? Yes, what's your question? Who are you? So, Shrimanti. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes. So, uh. while wearing candles, it's very confusing. So, could you this uh, any way so to simplify candles? Your, your voice is not clear. I'm not getting the actual question. Okay. Can it be clear again? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh. It's very fast area. So can we simplify that area and study? How can we simplify that area? Can you please give any suggestion? Which 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 area? Which area? <laughs> Canterbury Tales. Oh, the Canterbury Tales. Yes, I am telling you. Canterbury Tales. While preparing for Canterbury Tales, what you have to know that who were the writers? Now, sorry, at the, how many tales were there? Like last year, net the tales and the stories. How many stories were told by Chaucer? And uh, how many pilgrims are there? Okay. And uh, how many pilgrims told the stories? These things you have to know. And so far, the stories is concerned. You should not go through the all uh, entire story. Rather, there is a book I will suggest. And uh, Dina Balch, okay, or Margaret Drebel's book, the uh, Oxford um, uh, uh, in the English literature, okay. So that from that book you can uh, you will find that all the tales are given, okay, from right from the uh, beginning, the night tale up to the persons to the last tale, persons tale. So those tales, in short form, in in, in just summary wise, it is given. You should go through those tales, and if you go through the stones, then that will suffice. So far as Canterbury Tales is concerned, uh, that in last year, ten years questions, you will find only such kind of questions like character Grisel that appears in which tale, which is the in set also last year also there's a question, okay, or which uh, the who, who, which is the second tale of Canterbury Tales, the Miller's tale, which is the last tale of Canterbury Tales like Parsons tale, who are the characters? You uh, know, there last year net there was a question, a child was murdered. Okay, in which tale of Chaucer's Canterbury Tales we find the murder of a child? Okay, it will be Priory's tale. The answer will be the Priory's tale. So you have to know the tales. What are the? You, to go, you should not go into the detail. Just you should know, you know, who are the characters in which tales. It's a short form. It is given. It's just only two pages. In just you know, uh, in half an hour you can have. Uh, you can get the whole idea of Canterbury Tales. Okay, Oxford okay, history. Sir, what was the second? Yes. Rebel another one something bad. what uh, was the uh, same uh, suggestion dina batch dina batch the recent is dina batch d i n a h b i r c h dina batch is the writer recent the recent publication the earlier sixth edition was there uh, by margaret drebel but the seventh edition has been published by dina batch hmm? oxford companion to english literature okay sir uh, if you not getting okay i have my number Thank my you. whatsapp number okay if you have any more questions, then I have my WhatsApp now because that here is a, because of the time crunch. You can't feel free or so many questions you can't because other candidates are there. My WhatsApp number is there. You can write down nine five four seven one six double nine one six. You can call me or you can personally call me. You can take the help as well. Or you can WhatsApp me. Okay, nine five four seven one six double nine one six. Nine five four seven one six double nine one six. This is my WhatsApp number. You know, you can just call me. You can give, ask me questions. WhatsApp, whatever questions are there regarding, you no know, English, British literature. Okay, are you in the preparation of NET and SET? You can. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, most welcome. Any other? Okay, sir. sir, it's me, Masood. Can you hear yeah. me? 
Yeah, sir. Definitely. I have a question that uh, uh, you mentioned us all the ages uh, from the Anglo Saxons to the uh, present age, but among them, which is we should follow? Uh, we should emphasize more. Uh, you know, uh, among them, uh, uh, we we should have to follow. Uh, we should to, uh, should have to emphasize more in those ages. Okay, uh, your question is that one of which is we should give too much. We should, uh, we, yeah, one. from them yeah. Uh, because uh, all of yes. the ages are not very much necessary. Yes, I yes, think. but you should know. Okay, okay, I'm coming. You, I got you. I got your question. Okay, the answer will be that that you should know all the ages, but but there is no guarantee that these the questions are asked from this age or that and not. But so far as the train is concerned. because the the modern day taste is more of elimination than of selection you should remember this modern day okay. taste is more of elimination than of selection and that's why to eliminate the candidate you have to confuse the candidate and that's why the confusing questions are asked and the the, the most confusing question can be asked from contemporary and the modern period because there are so many writers so the students yes, are confused sir. is not mm. it so this yes, is yeah. from the victorian onwards i i will tell you from up to victorian age you will find more or less one you know, of the same writers and very easy to prepare but the moment you enter into the present age especially modern and post modern you find it really challenging very challenging and tough so you have to very careful you have to focus more and more because there are so many writers there are yes, so many sir. writers and so many works okay because yeah, yeah, in in chaucer chaucer was only poet But so yeah. far as T S Eliot is concerned, T S Eliot is concerned. He was a poet. He was a dramatist. He was a critic. He was a journalist. So many works that you have to read if you are reading one one writer from this modern period. There are so many things yes, you sir. have to take into account. So this is very challenging. Modern and post modern. Thank you, sir. This, sir, there is a there is an another question to me. Uh, yes. So uh, now, uh, as you have heard, I think uh, that PhD has become mandatory for uh, becoming uh, for sitting in the uh, CSC examination. So no, I think no, 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 no. Your question is wrong. Your question. PhD has become mandatory not for CSC for university. For the university. For university. Yeah. So PhD it has become notified by UGC last year, but yet the final notification has been out. Okay. So there okay, is nothing sir. to be panic. But so, sir, still, I if, didn't... If, uh, let me complete. If yes, PhD sir. is compulsory for uh, for uh, that will be if the notification is out, the PhD will be compulsory for university teaching. NET will be mandatory for college teaching. So yes, I sir. I don't think that those who are preparing you are for my uh, you are my uh, preparing for it. Especially your aim is CSC first. Okay, think of them. Yes, the whatever whatever notification and you know so far as my experience is concerned from 2000 onwards I'm following UGC this you know this uh, yes, this uh, this. Uh, uh, the tricks and the rather the tricks i tell not only i tell ugc because ugc is such kind of body which is never fixed in its ideology because it is guided by political masters who even yes, the sir. hrd minister they change according to their own way sometimes net was compulsory in 2000 and i remember i was in aligarh muslim university i was just just graduation and i was doing at that time graduation 2002 and murli manohar joshi was the hrd minister and it was decided that net must be the compulsory event from the phd from oxford or harvard If anyone coming from Oxford or Harvard, Harvard, they are not able to teach either in at the <coughs> Indian college or university until and unless they qualify NET. So NET was compulsory, and then comes in 2004 when Congress UP government came, and then yeah. comes that that Muhi Kaha Bishram writer, Muhi Kaha Bishram writer. That means uh, Arjun Singh, and what he did. Yeah. He did the most dangerous things. That everything is a uh, or oh, a uh, okay. But so all the all the animals as uh, as this gadha ghoda shop kinto yaki hoye galo. That means PhD, NET, or MPhil all are same. They are on same category. You can think. Then when he gone, when he is gone, and then come Kapil Sibal, and then then again in 2008 one words that MPhil was done away. MPhil ke suriye dilo. তারপরে আবার পিএইচডি এন্ড নেটি কম্পালসরি হলো এগেইন আই এম হিয়ারিং দিস থিং সো ইটস এ কাইন্ড অফ রোলার কোস্টার রাইড দ্য স্টুডেন্টস আর ভেরি মাচ কনফিউজড অফ দ্যাট সো আই থিংক আই থিংক ফার্স্ট অফ অল দ্য বেস্ট আইডিওলজি উইল বি ফার্স্ট টু কোয়ালিফাই নেট ওকে এন্ড দেন সিন্স সিন্স ইউ আর ইন দিস প্রফেশন দেন উই হ্যাভ টু ডু পিএইচডি আই ওয়াজ কনফিউজড अबाउट ইট নো देयर शुड बी नो कंफ्यूजन নেট ইজ কম্পালসরি নেট শুড বি দ্য মাস্ট ক্রাইটেরিয়া Okay, yes, PhD. Hello, so you have to do that, and if PhD becomes compulsory, the net will be compulsory for entrance entrance to PhD. Okay, 
Yeah, so make is, thank you, sir. Make is very important. Make is very important. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, okay, okay. Welcome. Any other question? Ah, uh, yes. Hello, uh, hello, hello, sir. I'm here. Hello. Uh, I hear you. Myself, Sutun. Uh, yes, Sutun yes, speaking. Take my bow, please. Hello, sir. I'm Sutun speaking from uh, okay. uh, from Hooghly, Mogra. Yes, sir. okay. Take my bow, sir. Okay. It's very nice okay. to hear you. Uh, sir, I have some questions. <clears throat> As I was not uh, from the beginning, that's why I, uh, I I was not able to hear all the suggestions. But it's it's very nice. Okay, thank, to you, hear you. thank you. Thank you. Um, sir, uh, <clears throat> uh, I have some I have some basic questions about my uh, Commonwealth literatures. Uh, I don't know which books uh, should uh, one follow uh, regarding those Commonwealth matters like African uh, literature uh, uh, and all that. Because. Uh, and American literature. So far, so far, my strategy is concerned from the net point of view. I am telling you should not yes, go to the particular book, okay, for for studying common or literature because very few questions are asked there. What you have to do, you just go through uh, the guides or you you just go through the internet, okay. So you type that okay. Commonwealth literature and so many writers will come, okay, and then make a list of those writers. No? So far, the Commonwealth mm -hmm. literature is concerned. Like Salman Rushdie will come, okay, uh, uh, at the, and then those diasporic writers will come. Okay, common Commonwealth literature is a confusing term. While the Indian English writers are also come under Commonwealth literature, yes, yes. Australian literature also come. Okay, so and I, I, I already told you okay, these writers, other than British writers, they will all come under Commonwealth. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, so except the, American, the, except American. The, uh, the, yes. Uh, so uh, there are a lot of writers. Uh, uh, I come to see whenever I search Wikipedia and all that. There are a lot of writers and a lot of uh, names uh, that make me confused while noting down. I, I think yeah. it has no end. It's going on and on. So what strategy should be followed uh, as there is no fixed book or a particular book? Uh, that's from, uh, no. Uh, so I uh, actually are confused about writers. Which writers you have to choose? So you go through the yes. questions. Which writers they uh, they ask the questions from? So in that way, so you should know the writers. Who are the main main writers? Suppose if you are reading history, English literature, you are not preparing for all the writers, right? because more than 500 writers. You are preparing for important writers. So what you have to do while preparing for any literature, whether Commonwealth or African, the main writers you have to see, main main writers. While uh, while uh, reading African literature like Wale uh, Soinka, Chirvaya Chibi, okay, Chivamanda Nuguji Adichi, okay. So these writers you have to follow. Sir, so like can that. I make a list and uh, send it to your WhatsApp? Uh, okay, okay, okay. You can. Uh, my WhatsApp number is there. You can ask me there for any questions. Okay. If you have any problem, you can make me a call as well. Because WhatsApp I find is very tedious because I have to type it takes so much time. But if you are calling me directly, then I can I can take your call and I can give you the answer. So what I can what I can tell in ten minutes, it will take me one hour to write. Is not it? So better to call. Now give me a call. I have my number. So is that the WhatsApp? Huh? Yes. Hello. Sir, is the WhatsApp number the same number to call? Uh, nine five four. The WhatsApp number same number. The number that I gave that is my WhatsApp number. You can call me nine five four seven one six double nine one six. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Welcome, welcome. Any other? Hello, sir. Uh, hello. Hello, sir. Uh, am I audible, sir? Ah, uh, who, who? Hello, sir. Ah, ah, who? Sir, what my is name is Prabhakar Ghosh. Yeah, oh, Prabhakar Ghosh. Yes, sir. Sir, my name is Prabhakar Ghosh. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, I can sir, hear my, you. Uh, hmm? Ah, sir, my question is from uh, romantic player. Hmm. What is your ah, question? Sir, in in some book uh, there is. Yes, sir. My question is that in some book there is mentioned that romantic period started from 85, but in M H Abraham book there is mentioned that it has started from 1785. Uh, but in some cases we can see that uh, in some books that they mention that it started from 1798. So sir, which one is correct? 17 no. or 1785? Okay, okay, okay. I'm telling. Actually, these dates are not you know have a, a kind of water time compartment or fix that you can fix the date. It's not like that. Okay, 1785 just romantic literature started and Augustan is finished. It's not like that. Okay, there is no such kind of order type component. For convenience of discussion, they have divided the dates. But so far as M. H. Abrams, it is written also. You have not gone through the properly the wording of M. H. Abrams. It's written that sometimes it is dated as from beginning from 1875. 
or uh, uh, that means after the uh, age of sensibility okay and also sometimes it you know dated to begin from 1789 that day or the year of french revolution and also the most importantly and the most frequently it is mentioned that it, it is said to begin from 1798 the year that signalized the publication of the great book you know that the lyrical ballads by joint uh, wordsworth and coleridge okay So there is no other type of permanent signal, but but 1798 is popularly accepted because the, the, this is a kind of you know poetic okay. manifesto by two writers were published. Okay, sir. Okay. So sir, 1895 instead of 1798. Huh? Yes. Yes. Sir, sir, we have to choose 1785 instead of 1798. Ah, uh, seventeen eighty-five. It is sometimes regarded, but actual date is start seventeen ninety-eight. Okay, seventeen ninety-eight. Ah, sir. Sir, I have a book uh, for uh, studying a uh, history of English literature. Are they? Are they? Did you do any other books for me? Is that okay, sir? Ah, uh, which book? I have another book. Which which book? Sir, so, uh, it is by Are they? Did you do any other books? Ah, any book you can go through, but uh, yeah, so far as English literature is concerned, I will first for the beginners. I will suggest, you know, either David Deutsch or you, you read just William J. Long. Hmm? Rutledge History of English Literature is also there. William J. Long. It's very easy. Language is easy, and the uh, David Deutsch's Critical History of English Language is very, you know, very sweet. And especially very standard language. When you will read that book, you will find that you, you are really reading English literature. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Any other? Any other question? Okay, if you have any other question, yes, then why? Ah, uh, that. Uh... in the chat box what should we study from romantic period yes the answer has been given i think that uh, that lady uh, asked the question hmm? answer as what should we study you should main uh, focus on main main writers i, I already told what's what's uh, what's what coleridge sade byron shelley keats and jane austen walter scott and also the gothic writers these writers you should study and their works Any other question? Uh, sir, can I please interrupt for a second? Sir, ah, yeah, okay, okay. Ah, okay. Yes, sir, thanks for your precious tips, the lecture, and uh, I'm actually awaiting another lecture. So, can you please uh, uh, tell me that whether we should wait or not for the? I can't tell because because yeah, I am very much you know thankful. I am humbled by the base authority. If they arrange another kind of lecture, then I can give. Okay, so it's a series of. Through you, I am I am I am asking the question to the authority, to the concerned authority. Okay, okay, the concerned authority will tell what will they tell. Yes, uh, generally we arrange uh, the uh, the lecture series. So this is the uh, base English. net set preparation lecture number 3 so we will arrange more lecture like this okay and we will inform you in our net set uh, group there is a net set group in english or base net set group so you can join there okay yes sir uh, whether it is uh, whatsapp group or facebook group or anything else so i am uh, It's a WhatsApp group. It's a WhatsApp group. Okay, Murshid, I will give you. Okay, you just uh, follow me, contact me. Then I, I I will send you on WhatsApp. Okay, you just contact me. I will tell when the base lecture is uh, happening. Okay, I can give you. Okay, sir. Actually, this group this was fine. It is a WhatsApp group. Hmm. But later on, I was removed. That's why I request uh, uh, with humble to the authority of the uh, uh, lecture to uh, again uh, include me in that group, please. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm writing my uh, WhatsApp number uh, to the chat box. Okay, In the chat box, so you can see it. I'm telling it eight nine two six. Okay, one seven three five three one. 
Okay. Eight nine two six one seven three five three one. This is my WhatsApp number. Those people who are uh, want uh, who want to join base lecture group, uh, uh, next step group. So you can knock me, and you can give your name and address and qualification. I will join you. Okay. So is there any question? I think no question. Is there any question? So, uh, Professor uh, Ramita Chatterjee, perhaps Ramita Chatterjee, perhaps uh, some uh, she unmuted herself. I think she wanted to ask some question. Ramita Chatterjee, who is Ramita Chatterjee? Do you want to ask any question? No. Thank you, sir. Ah, yes. Thank you. Ah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Professor M D Tarikul Islam, this is uh, a detailed description of how uh, how to prepare British literature, especially uh, net set. Uh, so this is wonderful. This is helpful, very helpful lecture. So I want to sum up that uh, whole. It's not possible to sum up, but yet I'm trying. Uh, I will tell the student to study question properly. This is the first step. Okay, and again, I'd like to say that uh, the lesser known work from famous author and famous work of lesser known writer. Again, uh, read famous quotation, opening line of famous work, concluding line of famous work when. Novel and etc. Study name of the character and the plot and read the story. You can uh, read from any other books. Uh, you can read uh, easily from Wikipedia. Also. And again, I I I I want to say that yes, you need hard work, but do smart work. Okay. So uh, this is uh, today's lecture. And uh, now, uh, Professor. And Nargis Ahmed, Madam, will give uh, deliver the vote of thanks. Nargis, Madam, it's over to you. Uh, thank you, Madam Sir. First of all, I would like to thank uh, on behalf of Base for giving me the opportunity to deliver a vote of thanks. Uh, good evening to all of you present here. On behalf of Bengali Academia for Social Empowerment, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our today speaker, uh, Muhammad Tarikul Islam. Net qualified gold medalist, assistant professor, uh, Department of English, Coach Bihar University, for his excellent and spontaneous uh, deliberation. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, I think students got uh, benefited from this lecture today. Uh, as well as on behalf of base, I must thank you once again, sir, for your initially for your uh, uh, separate introduction uh, regarding base and your best wishes and compliment regarding base. We also wish to uh, very um, uh, we uh, our best wishes for you also, sir. Thank you. Um, uh, I would like to uh, thank. You. thank Professor Davakar also, uh, senior research fellow from the Kalyan University, for coordinating today's session. Uh, thank you, sir. I cordially thank all participants who joined today today's lecture and shown their interest on base. Uh, I thank you all. Uh, I would also like to thank base president, vice president, GS, and all members for their active and sincere support to make base lecture series happening successfully. Thank you all once again. And uh, finally, um, the announcement for our next lecture series. Our next lecture series number 19 is on the topic, Critic of Race or uh, Racism and its relevance to India by Dr. Gajendra Ayaturai, uh, who is from Center for Modern India Studies uh, from, from University of Göttingen, Germany. Uh, it will be on uh, 22nd July, uh, uh, which is on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. sharp. Thank you. Thank you, uh, all of you, once again. So over to you, Hassan, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Nargis Ahmed, madam. Thank you again. So uh, now uh, I must conclude this uh, session. So a uh, participant can uh, leave this session. Thank you.
Yes, yes, please tell. Yes, please uh, tell loudly. Sir, can you please share me the WhatsApp number that you have given to me? Yes, you can see uh, in the chat box. Just yes, eight nine two six one seven. Eight nine two six one seven one seven three five three one. Three five three one. Okay. Eight nine two six one seven three five three one. Yes, yes. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Thank you.